Hello there, Michelle Short here and I'm delighted to be joining you today on the MFTV YouTube channel. Today I have a card to share with you using stencils to create a night sky background. I'm actually using three different stencils today and layering, layering them up to create the night sky background. So I've taken the rectangle extraordinaire stencil first and I've just added that onto a panel of white cardstock that is four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. Next I've taken the circle extraordinaire stencil and I'm using the positive portion of that. I love that these stencils come with the negative and the positive portions so that you can use them in lots of different ways. And then for my last stencil I'm using the rolling cloud stencil and for this I'm going to create some clouds onto my night sky background. And I'm using Distress Inks for that. And my first colour here is the Wilted Violet colour. And I'm just adding that across the top. I like to work from the top to the bottom, but you can work in any which way you want to. So I'm just using a blending brush here just to add that colour on top. And I want the colour to be darkest on the right hand side, furthest away from the moon. And I'm going to go in here with some black soot. So I am just dabbing off any excess ink onto a piece of paper that's to my right hand side and I'm just adding a small amount of that black soot on the top just to darken that corner up and then just using a cloth here just to wipe away any excess ink on that stencil just because I'm going to be handling it quite a lot as I move this down towards my background and so it just helps to not get too inky fingers as I'm going along I'm using that memo tape here just to hold the stencil in place I do reuse this memo tape, it does look like I'm using tons and I actually am using quite a bit but I do reuse it, I just stick it on the side of my craft mat when I finished and reuse it for another project. So as you can see here, I've as I've moved the stencil down you can see that the moon shape or the circle as it is at the moment is on the left hand side. So I. For the most part I'm just using the cloud stencil on the left hand side while it's going across the moon and then I'll just move it over as I go down the panel. So just blending that on there and just moving the stencil around. I love that you have the four different sides and actually if you flip it over you can have eight different sides as well to this stencil which is really nice. So just using lots of different edges just to create some interest here on the panel. And then here on the left hand side I did want to just kind of make it look like the cloud is kind of pe peeking out from the bottom of the moon there so I just wanted to add a little bit of extra colour. And then I can just add my last few clouds here at the bottom. And I obviously wanted to keep them really quite dark because I'm thinking that this will be a night sky with the moon there in the background. So just using those blending brushes just to add that colour on. and just finishing up there at the bottom. I am going to add a little bit of the black soot just right in the corner here on the left hand side as well, just because it's the furthest away from the moon. Just finishing up there and then for me this is the best part, I get to remove all of the masks. I personally really love the kind of colour of the ink blending and then with a really nice sharp sharp white edge and I think these stencils work perfectly for this kind of design but you could definitely add the clouds all the way to the edge or you could do this on a separate panel as well if you wanted to. So I'm just removing that circle there and because I used removable adhesive this comes off really nicely and I'm just take, making sure to remove any excess uh, tape runner there, it comes off really cleanly with your finger. So next I'm taking two images from the Halloween Who stamp set, one of the owls there and also the branch and I'm just going to stamp them down onto some white cardstock. Once I get brand new stamps I do like to just run my fingers over them. I know that it looks a bit horrible but I find that the ink adheres to them really nicely that way. So I'm just inking those up with extreme black ink and then I'm going to stamp those down onto my white cardstock here. And I'm just going to do that a couple of times just to make sure that I get a really nice dark impression. I apologise if you can hear any rain in the background, it's pouring down here in London. 
So next I'm going to colour in my images with Copic markers. I do apologise that my camera didn't quite catch the beginning of the colouring but I'm going to colour the owl with some warm greys and because this image is going to be in front of the moon I wanted to kind of have it like it's kind of like backlit so it's quite difficult to see here but I'm just adding a kind of like a white border around the sides of the image I'm going to have the darkest color on the outside but I do want that little bit of white just at the edge and sometimes it helps to look like the light is coming from behind and in theory a lot of the front of this owl would be dark as well because obviously the light is on his back or her back but I do still like to just have a bit of lightness in it as well uh, that's just my personal preference so I went in with my darkest color which was the W7 and now I'm going in with the W5 just to blend that out I like to color darkest to lightest so I find it um, a little bit more helpful for how I like to color so I'm going in here with the W3 just blending out that W5 and then I do go in with the W1 just to add that lightest colour in the middle and then I'm going along all of the outside edges with that W1 because I don't want them to be stark white but I do want them to have some contrast between that edge there and then I just went over the line slightly so I'm just going in with the colourless blender and then I do go in with the W1, the W2 and the W0 for the eyes and then for the beak and the feet, I'm using Y26 and YR31 and the little buckle there on the hat as well. And then for the band on the hat, I'm using V17, V15 and V12. And then for the hat, again, I'm just going to add that kind of the backlit light as I'm calling it and I'm using some C markers for this and the, my darkest colour here is the C8 and then I go in with C7, C6 and then C5 as my lightest colour and then for the outside edges I'm going in with C3 and I did make it a little bit too light there on the left hand side so I'm going back in with the C5 just to darken that slightly and then I apologise that my head got in the way for the branch but I used E59, E57 and E55 for that and then for the leaves here I'm using G29, YG17, YG25 and YG01 and then I can use the coordinating dynamics to cut those out so just using some low tack tape to hold them in place and then I can run those through my die cutting machine and then I just want to make sure that the owl is going to sit on the branch nicely so I'm just making sure that he's, he or she is going to fit on top and then I can work on my sentiment so I wasn't quite sure exactly what sentiment I wanted and then I found this best witches sentiment from the Boo Crew stamp set and although this is an owl and not a witch she is wearing a witch's hat so I thought that the sentiment still worked quite nicely together so I'm stamping that onto some black licorice cardstock with Versamark ink implying, applying some white embossing powder and then I'm heat setting that until it's completely melted and I do like to heat set from the front and the back and then I'm using a skinny strips dynamic to cut that out running that through the die cutting machine and then I can just cut off the excess sides with my mini guillotine. Here I have my panel and I want to add a little bit of colour onto the moon. The moon is obviously isn't completely white so I wanted just to add an essence of colour here so I'm going in with the E51 Copic marker first and then I go in with the E50 to kind of blend that out a little bit and then I go in with the colourless blender and I add quite a bit of the colourless blender on top to try and blend that E50 into white and it kind of just softens up that edge and then I do go back in with the E50 just to add a little bit more if I've lightened it up a little bit too much and then back in with the colourless blender again 
and I'm going to adhere that panel onto an A2 size white card base. So that's a finished size of four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And then I can just cut off any excess. I tend to create my card bases just slightly bigger than the card panel, just so that I can cut them down if I need to. I'm then taking some on point precision glue, just adding small dabs of that onto the back of the branch. And then I can stick that down on top of the moon. And although it kind of looks like the branch is sort of floating in midair, I'm thinking that the tree would be on the left hand side and that's kind of cut out from where I did the masking of the rectangle. So in my head it's on the left hand side <laughs> and hopefully kind of most people's brains would kind of think that that's where it would be as well. But I do know that it sort of looks like it's floating but I think it's okay. I think I got away with it. And I've added some foam tape onto the back of the owl there and I'm just placing that down so that she can sit on top of the branch. And then I've just added some foam tape onto the back of the sentiment strip as well and just placing that there on the top right hand corner. And then to finish off I just wanted to add a little bit of sparkle onto the card so I'm adding some small dabs of the on point precision glue and then adhering some iridescent bubbles on top. And I like to just add three around the sentiment strip there, just using the embellishment one just to help me keep them in place. And that's the card finished for today. I hope you've enjoyed watching. I really like how those stencils can be layered up in any which way you want to. Links to the products that I used will be in the description bar. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon.